I make my own coffee liqueur. There's a sample for you. It's always fun until it isn't. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the pump room. And today you will notice that we are not actually in the pump room, but we are in the shed quarters. This is the best hat I've ever worn in my life. So we're in the shed quarters and we are filming in Joe Petcher's home bar. If you don't know who Joe is, he is the global brand ambassador for Monkey Shoulder and has been for the past four years. He is someone who has taken hundreds of bartenders all across the globe to a wonderful thing called Camp Monkey, which is some mad, mad bartender stuff. Crazy ass party and I've lost my train of thought. We're going to talk to Joe about his home bar and all the wonderful things that he's done with it. So, welcome to the shed quarters. It's Britney, bitch. <laughs> Joe, you are the global brand ambassador for Monk Shoulder. How did that happen? How did you get into that role? I started bartending in 2003 because I didn't want to go to university and I'm still on my year out. I fell into bartending because it was a fun thing to do for very little money at the time. Things went well and won a couple of competitions. William Grant asked me to work for them and then worked for the UK, looking after all their brands, doing trainings and WSCT development. Worked for Raker and launched that across Asia and Australia. And off the back of that, got the Monk Shoulder job. Kind of the job I was wanting because Monkey Shoulder came out in 2005 when I just started Barton. It resonated with us at the time. There's a few brands out there, but it kind of stood out because it kind of talked the talk. It spoke the right language. Um, so with, with the role, what are your responsibilities with it? Like, what are, what are you going to do? At the moment, yeah. <laughs> I sit at home and look at a screen all day. However, planning is ahead. The world's going to reopen, obviously. Parties, getting people together because Monkey Shoulder are all about positive community, getting people together, great drinks, great music, great people. They're the three pillars of every event and it's inclusive, you know, it's approachable, everyone's welcome, but we just want to get back to that. Online's not the same. The lock-in live stuff you've done, that's been awesome. Like that's definitely kept myself going and Ali going through like yeah. lockdown. You're planning to just take, take a bunch of bars to Thailand. We um, were like, like Cat, Cat Monkey's been around for quite a while, but we've evolved it into like a, an annual program that we, we take about 30 or 40 bartenders to somewhere in the world that's of industry relevance. So the last few places we went was Iceland to launch Smokey and talk about sustainability, which we carbon offset the whole trip. We went to Italy, to Koki to talk about vermouth because the vermouth selection in bars was just booming. Before that, it was Spain, Sherry, etc. We were going to Thailand to talk about the importance of fresh ingredients and you know the, the, the booming cocktail culture in that part of the world. Mm. Obviously that couldn't happen. So that reinvented itself into Lock in Life. So that was like a thing that we did instead of camp because of lockdown. So working with Monk Shoulder, yeah. which you've been doing for like the past few years, and like God, like I remember like being there when you launched like this massive cement mixer, and that was so so cool. We went to Banbury and stuff. What has been your best experience, Monk Shoulder? Like it could be like a night out. Or anything, like, what's, uh, what's on, on, out honestly, um, getting the job in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Hell. Because the free, like from there, it was like, I've actually got the job that I wanted for a long time. And it was amazing. After that, everything else has kind of like been amazing. The team's amazing. The company is amazing. They give us real freedom to allow our creativity out. You know, we're not really confined to a rule book, you know, as such, because well, we all have our own personalities and we want to represent the brand in the right way, um, but through ourselves. And that's what makes it very approachable and natural. And, you know, all the things that we've done with tools and bartender parties, it's just very just down to earth. And there's no, there's no cliques or snobbery. It's, it's yeah, just easy I've, again. I've never had that sort of impression with like William Button, like Monk Shoulder and everything you guys have done. Also, like the tools are fantastic. Like the, the tools we use behind the bar, like they're so well thought out with like the claw, the trigger jigger and like the extendable bar spoon like i've got a fork somewhere that i steal people's noodles with i think that's it somewhere but yeah like this is something we use on the show regularly as well yeah so the where did i put the original yeah so that is the original uh that's from the late 1800s and it's zinc and silver plated before stainless steel was invented it's not accurate but um that was in, that was inspired by us it inspired us to re redesign it into into this. Most 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 monk shoulder tools are reinventions of things that have existed. But if you look at it, this is definitely a lot more refined. You've got all the measurements on the inside. What but later this year we are launching a tool that is not inspired by a pre-existing tool. It's built from the ground up. 
You're going to tell us what it is? Or no. Is it a secret? No, oh, no, no. Secret. I need to make sure it works first. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff you've done, like all the like the crazy stuff you've done amongst other, like working in brand stuff, like a big staple of your career was working at Sahara and Reading. And like, you know, you had like one of the lowest turnovers probably to ever have in a bar team. It was really hard to get on that team. You've had huge people, like you've had people like, what, well, Alex Godfrey took over from you? Alex right? Godfrey, uh, Dan Bobby, Dean McGregor. We had like the same team of eight for about three years and the CV stack for applications got higher and <laughs> no one left because it was just such a tight-knit bar team and it was a sad day when I left but you can't stay one place forever. Do you miss being behind the bar? Do you miss like you know your, your big weeks and like getting slammed in the station? I am behind the bar. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but not this kind of bar. Uh, you know no. I mean. So I always thought I wanted to open a bar and then I realized I didn't want to have the stress of the business side. I love bartending and I always loved it. I had my own business for a while, like as a consultant, but this bar is for me, my friends to enjoy. There's no till, there's no tax, there's no it's just no a stock take. it's just no stock take. It's just a it's just a space to enjoy and it's a dream come true to have a garden I can have one in, you know. It took about a year to build, but here we are. That's gonna stick, isn't it? It's gonna, it's gonna f me right up. <laughs> Plastic scoops, man. Plastic scoops is what it's about. Oh, old school. See this? Old school. Grey. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> no school. Right guys, so we are going to go and do a daiquiri challenge with Joe. Is he going to do well? Is he going to f*** up? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Are you aware of the rules of a daiquiri challenge? We've been through the rules of the Pump from Daiquiri Challenge. Can you explain the rules to me? Um, you make a daiquiri quickly. Hands on the bar top, always. And then we're going to count you down. Are you f***ing ready for this? Uh, yeah. Sounds so excited. <laughs> Sounds so excited. Okay, cool. All right, Joe. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. Are you ready? Ready. Three, two, two one, go. Was that like a double daiquiri in that glass? Tasted good. That's a great time. Is it? Yeah. I knocked that over, which <clears throat> so professional. Professional. So professional. A tidy bar is a happy bar. Your inner management speaker. <laughs> yeah. Time to leave. Time to clean. So. 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 Five star or dive bar? Interesting. I'm warm. Time and a place. However, I combined the two a few years ago. If you look at the poster over there, the dark side of the Savoy, we did a diamond reef in Brooklyn for BCB, the first BCB in Brooklyn. And I took the, I took Declan, I took the rest of the team, John the pianist, and we did two hours of silver service, American bar style amazement. And then we turned the American bar into the dark side of the Savoy. We turned the Savoy into a dive bar. So it was a five star dive bar for the last two hours. And that was probably one of the best events ever. Okay, number one, very <laughs> jealous I wasn't there. Number two, that's really cool. Number three, in general, <laughs> I know you're not out. Are you more like to dive bar? Di yep. Yeah. Which dive bar? Do you have a favourite? Uh, this can be one, depending on who's round. Working dive uh, bar with a PDQ that's not a label maker. Crowbar was always fun. Crowbar was always fun. Oh yeah, no, crowbar. As was, uh, oh, still, uh, I'm, um, Islington. Slim Jims. Slim yeah, Slim, Slim Jims, Slim Jims. Great nights there, never had a bad night there. Otherwise, otherwise um, in Brooklyn, there's a place called The Gutter, which is a 1970s, never been refurbed bowling alley that serves beer and f***ing curly flies in 24 hours a day. That's a great dive bar. We're going. <laughs> Ali, Ali, pack your bag. We're getting on a flight. We're Gall going Gallons of Miller High Life, curly fries and bowling at 5 a.m. 
Do you know what I love about Miller High Life? Is it gets served cool. on ice with coops and it's like a bottle of champagne. If you're a fancy. I, like the first time I had Miller High Life, I was in like a bar called the Bushwick Country Club and it's a shitty dive bar in, in like in Bushwick in like, Williamsburg. And William Pineapple was behind the bar and it was like <laughs> bottomless, uh, bottomless like Cheez Its. And then just like I had Miller, I was so and they had this mini golf course which had just been made with some astroturf and like some holes cut into plywood it was terrible it was like one of the best experience i've actually still got the card in my wallet because i'm a member of it and it's, member. Just, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's a sick dive bar <laughs> oh. there, there, there are many there are many and uh, i love finding new ones and there's some great ones there's there's one called uh seven jokers in athens uh which is amazing the bartender's bars that they're the latest ones open for the bartenders the dive, it's great there's, there's too many there's too many to mention and I don't really believe in there being a guilty pleasure, but like, what is your alcoholic guilty pleasure? Like, for me, it's VK and Midori Sours because I'm a slag with those drinks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have been known to enjoy a palate cleansing Pessoa every now and then. Oh. God, I love that fake passion for goodness. I can't fault Pessoa. It's no. excellent. We had it on draft for a while. I think uh, we don't have any anymore, and that just goes to show how much we were enjoying it. So, what drink are you making? So, today I am going to be making a Boulevardier number three, which is with Monkey Shoulder. One of my favorite vermouths, Cookie, Campari, obviously, and a little dash of some red wine syrup that I've um, made recently. Really simple, stirred down, delicious. Cool. So, starting off with our Monkey Shoulder, we are going to go about 45 mils in our triple jigger there, exacto pour. And then we are going to go with, I like mine a little bit less bitter. So I go about 20 mils of Campari. And then we're gonna go with the Cocky Torino, which is one of my favorites to use in this particular drink. Really rich, about 20 mils of that. Tiny dash of our red wine bitters. You don't need much at all. This is just a one-to-one -one reduction with a little bit of citric acid, just to help complement those vermouth notes. And then some classic Gazrigan bitters, one dash of. And then we're gonna stir. I can't be our sister. So, I'm just gonna let my friend do the work. And Simply garnish, classic orange zest. Cheers. Prism. That is delicious. I need like 10 of these in my box. <laughs> You're a bit of a nerd, you make a load of bunch of stuff. What is the invention that you are most proud of? The most exciting one was probably the firework powered old fashioned stirrer. So how did that work? We're going to show you a clip of this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to show you the clip of we, this. We're going to leave it there, I think. The one I started with, the, the, the chainsaw powered cocktail shaker, when I started with Raker, they said, go and do stuff with this much money. And I was like, okay, fine, let's do something crazy. So what I wanted to do is reinvent the way a classic cocktail was made, but without reinventing the drink itself. Just like Raker reinvented 
how they create the liquid rather than the actual liquid itself. So that was how to make 10 Ramos in under a minute. And we used a Husqvarna petrol chainsaw and it worked really well. It was loud, it was completely impractical and we coughed up all the fumes. Other than that, we've, we've got things like the stirrer, which I used on my job interview for Monkey, which is just the lazy stirrer, just does, it stirs, does what it says. We have got the lazy old fashioned claw game, which was just a little bit of fun. That's it, that's it. Press down, press down, press down. Yay! Done. Like, I don't know if I feel like it was a trap or a loss. Old fashioned. We're not trying to replace bartenders. Let me get that straight. We're not trying to replace that. It's just like, how can we have fun with this and just, you know, have a laugh? Just like you guys shot a rocket up into shake something. Did it shake? Is it a Garibaldi? Go on, Ali. Give it a try. I fucking hate Garibaldis. We did some fun stuff in the centrifuge coffee table. So, um, this is a, a working coffee table. Th like, this is like some half-life right here. Um, that's quite fun. Oh yeah, Joe has a centrifuge coffee table, which is, and it works, and it's super casual. What a, what a cheap coffee table. <laughs> Weighs a ton. <laughs> <laughs> It weighs more than four of me. So like, uh, when, when did you start building the shed quarters? Um, a place? When it was about uh, three and a half years ago. Got the sh got the shed, insulated it, got power down, no running water yet, but it's a functional space, lounge, centrifuge coffee table, bar, fridge freezer, ghetto vap, tools for building stuff, as you do. Is what it is, it's multifunctional. It's like a wasabi knife. I like that. I really <laughs> like that. That's a great analogy. It's like my second lounge. It's a great lounge. All you need is a pole. That could be arranged. We should gift him, <laughs> we should gift him a pole. <laughs> so what? Uh, what's next for this space? Tidying up. Um, I've just built a shed extension, an extension to the shed, which is a normal shed, which I keep all the normal shed things in. So it's decluttering this and just generally enjoying it. It's not ever going to be a bar that people can come to. It's just my space for my friends to enjoy with me. Thanks so much to the Pump Room for visiting the Shed Quarters. Don't forget to like and subscribe and support these guys and everything they're doing. Check out that GoFundMe page and um, see you soon. New videos every Monday. Yep. Is that, is that, is that? Yeah. I can see how that can work. Yeah, it's all fine. All cool. good though. Awesome. That was Do you understand that film with her? Unfortunately, yes. And she is not a professional. For who? No, no, for who? For who is that unfortunate she, for? She, she is not a professional. No, nah, no, none no, of us are. No. I either have ADHD or diarrhea, I'm not sure. They both come and go. Are you filming this? <laughs> <laughs> this is great content. I <laughs> BTS. Um, um, I'm still single. Uh, I like long walks on the beach, Aquariuses, sometimes Aries, and um, big orgasms. Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs>